following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! This, this is the Players' Lounge. Broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now your hosts, Barry Church, Danny McRae, and Nui Scruggs. Welcome to 2020. The Players Lounge. We back. First we back. podcast of the new century. We back. That involves a new era of Cowboys football. Hey. Barry Church. Yes, sir. Danny McRae in the house. Go I'm Tigers. Nui Scruggs. <laughs> we are excited. We've got a whole lot to get into today. We will talk about your LSU Tigers playing for the national championship later on. But right now, we must talk about the new head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. I was at the press conference Wednesday when it happened. I will be talking to Mike McCarthy in an interview that I'll do for TV uh, later on today. So um, I'm going to ask you guys also, but what's, what's something I should ask him? But let okay. me start off with your impressions and right. ask you both a two-part question. One, what did you like about the hiring? And two, what's one question you have about the hiring. Barry, you start. I'll start us off. Um, the one thing I liked about it, I mean, I like multiple things about it, but the one thing I liked about it is I feel like he can come in here and he can get Dak to that next level. I mean, he's had, you know, Brett Favre. He's had Aaron Rodgers. He's had quarterbacks under his tutelage that have played at extremely high levels. I mean, Brett Favre was already that guy when he got there, but Aaron Rodgers, he drafted him in there and he got him to where he is now before he had left. So I feel like he can do that same thing to Dak Prescott, get him his game to a next level. Every year we've seen Dak since his rookie year, he's improved, he's improved, and now under his tutelage, I think he'll be able to take that to the next level and hopefully get over that hump. I mean, in this decade, it's been pretty much a decade of just mediocrity. We went in there, you know, we won the division, we lost, we, we, we came in last place in the division. Then we went to the playoffs, we couldn't get past that divisional round. We have a guy that's coming in, he's proven, he's won Super Bowls, he's been there, he was with Green Bay for 13 years, and I feel like nine years straight he went to the playoffs. So this is a guy that's proven, he can go into the NFL, he knows what, what's going on, what to take this team to the next level, and I think he'll be able to do that. Yeah, uh, I like to hire because same thing you said. Uh, I think I think he'll really be uh, a, a great help to Dak, and I also like the fact that he had been sitting on the side. So he was a, he was successful uh, as a head coach, won the Super Bowl. He's sitting on the side. He's watching the change of the game. He, mm -hmm. He's watching it unfold. He hires a guy <laughs> to come in and practically live with him. That's true. You know, to do analytics and figure out how the game is changing and how he can uh, be successful in it. And now we have him. Okay. So, right, so, so we, we, we'll be the first people to see yeah. if, if that works or, or if it doesn't. All right. Back to the second part of this. Okay. What's one question you have about the hiring? Danny, you start. Uh, my question is uh, control. I mean, so we talked about – Aaron Rodgers mentioned that he, he thought that uh, McCarthy wanted to go somewhere where he have a lot of input in. How much – control is he going to have here with the Cowboys? Everybody understands that Jerry has a big voice and Steven has a big voice in the organization. So I'm just – it's intriguing to see how this will play out when, when he has something that he wants that might not go in line with what they want. That is a great question. And I was listening to uh, the podcast that Jane Slater of NFL Network and, and her producer Bobby Belt have. They spoke with Andrew Brandt. Mm -hmm who was on the business side in Green Bay, and they hired Mike McCarthy. And he said he had gotten two phone calls from NFL clubs asking about Mike. He said the Cowboys were not one of them. And in the conversations he had with the people, he had been told that Mike did not want to handle – the draft didn't want to hand, he just wanted to coach okay. that hey you got personnel people that's fine but he wanted to actually coach which i thought well that fits totally into you know what they were looking for and how they like to operate and to me if you could let will mcclay work his magic You'll be okay. Yeah, well, because, I mean, he's been hitting in drafts. Yeah, you're going to be okay. Be he's fine. been hitting, but when that pressure is on you and then you coaching and all of a sudden it's not working out, <laughs> you know, that that I just want to coach mentality turns into, hold on, I need to figure out how how I'm going to drive my boat myself, right? I don't, I don't want somebody else true. driving the plane and I'm the one getting fired over it because these think, guys are picking these so people. So do you think it'll come to a point where he's like, you know, I got I to gotta do this my way? 
I don't know, man. The pressure's high. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I know it's, people, they like, win people now. think it's a, yeah, it's a new era no, and no. all that stuff, and people got some years to get the. Nah, no, ain't no years. <laughs> the last uh, JG got fired because it was the, they were under the assumption assumption that we had enough to win. Mm-hmm. Which we they still do. so the assumption is we still have enough to win, mm-hmm. especially over the top now because we have a proven head coach. That's so true. Pressure's on. They say more pressure than what it, what it seems like. <laughs> Go six and ten. You see what happens. <laughs> One of the things that that I have admired about Will McClay. And, and I, I know Will going back to his days with the Dallas Desperados when the Desperados were on NBC and we were doing games and got to know Will there. Will talks to the coaches. What is it you like? So, Barry, mm-hmm. you tell me, as a, my defensive backs coach, what are the guys that you're looking for? Okay. Danny, you're my offensive wide receiver coach. Tell me, what type of, is there a certain height? Is there a certain type of speed? What what are you looking for in the guys that you want? So Will takes that information in, and as he's looking at the draft, you know he's going to bring you, all right, Danny, here are the guys you like. Also, here's some guys here we think can play. Let's get in here and, ch- and check. So, so when he's doing it, it's not just one thing. This is my system. This is what I think. Mm-hmm. Bam, you take it. There is a collaboration. Oh yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, well, as, sure. as two guys who know Will uh, personally, oh, yeah. uh, we we definitely understand the work ethic and how and how, how Mc- it happens, right? And I think Mike McCarthy will appreciate that. Mm-hmm. That's that. That's just my feeling. That's right. something I'll, I'll maybe check with him. So, I ask you now. Okay. What's one question you have about the eye? He his was control. Yeah. What's yours? I'm definitely 100 percent with you on the control because <laughs> I, I don't know what's up with that, but. If we're going uh, another direction, I'm going to have to go special teams. I mean, me and you talked about it earlier, but, um, you know, his whole tenure in Green Bay, I think they were the best rank they had in their special teams was maybe 28th, 27th around those lines. And we've seen what special teams can do here. I mean, they struggled a lot this season, and, and it hurt us in games. It pretty much lost us one game in uh, in New England. So I want to see how he takes this special teams approach. If they're going to bring in guys like straight core guys, like how New England does, like right. with the Matt Slaters and those guys, or are they just going to do it where, you know, it's by committee. Let me get a rookie in here to do this or do that. But I want to see how, how, how he takes special teams. Does he take it hard, or is it just – Nah, it's just a part of the game. I will have a that that is going to be one of the questions I ask Mike McCarthy mm-hmm. when I sit down for my TV interview with him later today. Uh, Rick Goslin writes the special teams uh, rankings every year. Rick Goslin, Hall of Fame, um, uh, a writer in the NFL, you know, he's enshrined that media wing in the NFL uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame, and Mike McCarthy's Packers finished last three times in special teams, 29th one once and 31st in another I think 16 might have been the highest they got Uh, so um, through the years I've been good friends with Lance Allen who's the uh, NBC uh, sports director up in Milwaukee he hosted the Mike McCarthy TV show for over a decade and so I'd asked him about that I was like does he not care about Mm sports give me the insight he said well says two part question says probably was a little bit loyal to Sean Slocum too long as special teams coach and then he said remember Ted Thompson is the guy Picking the players. And Ted Thompson was pretty much always giving him a young roster. Mm. And a lot of those young guys were on special teams. And you guys know. So so let's go here then. So we just spoke about Will. And we know historically here we have not brought in guys that are core guys, right? We've shaped them. Mm-hmm. I was a, a core guy. But we shaped them. And I was an undrafted free agent. So they we hadn't really made – big free agent pickups for those type of guys and then uh, gave them contracts for them to stay here. Is that going to change now? We still have pretty much the same people picking the players. Yeah. Is Are they going to listen to McCarthy if the special team coach that he hires come in and say, hey, man, we need five core guys and I have these guys from around the league that I, I play with or coach and these are the guys that I want to be here. I'm right there in the church yeah. with you right there. Yeah, okay, I'm is. sitting there right there with you in that whole thing. of, And I, I go back to what you talked about, that mastermind that he had for a year. As you did your deep dive, did you look back into what you didn't do in special teams in Green Bay? And are you going to change your philosophy? And is that something you go to Will McClay about and talk about? Hey, look, we need we need a Matt Slater. Mm-hmm. We need a Larry Izzo. You know, we need some – We you know, need guys that don't play offense or, or defense. They can focus strictly they, on yes, teams. They, they are teams – Players, they're playing all four phases, and their production is super high, and they are staples here. So when the other people come in, they know that these are our core guys, and these are the leaders of our team, and that's how it works out. Is it, a just, Devin, is it a Devin Hester type? I mean, yeah. look at what Devin Hester did true. throughout his career in terms of making impact. And, you know, yeah, he was a receiver, running back, and, you know, every now and then they ran some stuff yeah, for him. Yeah. But for the most part, he was his, a turner. Va- right, his value was, all right, here comes the kickoff, here comes the punt, and, and you know what, look out. So that's, I think, three 
three of us are right here together and step in. Special teams is an area where the Cowboys would basically go in and lose it every single week. That yeah, can't this is happen. True. Right. It, it can. simply cannot happen. Mm-mm. And if Mike McCarthy has done this big mastermind, He's had to know that that was an issue, but how does he fix it? How does Will McClay, how do they as it work? Because this is something where all everybody Mm -hmm. can get in a room and get better at this. And I'm the belief that, okay, maybe you get a receiver that is a special teams core guy and and Mike being the offensive guy, okay, you you and whoever the receiver coach you bring in, you guys go fix it. John Fossil is going to be his – Special teams coach. Mm -hmm. You know, the Rams put it out on Twitter. He was going to the Cowboys, and they said, good luck. And then the punter Hecker was like, no! (laughs) Uh, But I I had a a coaching buddy of mine who was with with him at another NFL stop, and he said, Bones is good. Mm. He spoke highly of me. This is a guy who does not give give out praise, you know, unwillingly. And he said, Bones is really good. He said, he will fit here. And so when it comes to give, teams coaching, give, yes. give them some play. Just just to go on with special teams. So I, a lot of people don't really understand the type of player that that it takes to play special teams, right? So when you say the young guys and they're made up of of young players when they come in, these are guys who uh, got a running back who gets drafted in the third round throughout college has never played special teams, right? right? But he's your third running back. So now the special teams coaches have to find a way to teach him something that he's never done and then you put him out there on the field and you get that production of, of a block mm-hmm. run or not being able to make this a tackle and that type of stuff. So when we say that, the young guys, that's what we're talking about. I'm talking about the Slaters, like you mentioned. And that, that, and then here's another question I have. I mean, I remember uh, – Bill Belichick in, in a special they were talking about Lawrence Taylor and the, the football like how you know how Lawrence played special teams you know Parcells when he was here he had Demarcus where you have guys playing special teams like okay yeah you're an integral player but we need you to play special teams as well can McCarthy you know start Jedi mind tricking dudes to think that hey oh, let, let me tell you <laughs> something no no, we, no no we need you this ain't this not that error remember what Dez was a punt returner for a minute oh, they yeah, broke yeah. his ankle it was a wrap <laughs> nah, was special a teams important <laughs> but. uh some of those guys you don't want to have out there. Remember, Sean Lee happened. was on there, yeah, and, and D-Ware was out there, it and then that, that ended. Some yeah. of those guys are not – you're a great pass rusher, don't put them out there rushing punts. You ain't going to see punts. me long, punt, <laughs> yeah. block, punt don't, safe. You don't, ain't gonna don't, see. don't do not put them out there because cause you will get cut, you know what I'm mm, saying, all that type of stuff. Band so. rush at the wing, oh, protecting yeah, no, the punt. Nah, don't, that ain't don't, happening. Don't do that. Okay, but. okay. so, so, so those, those are you know, things that, right. that mm-hmm. when we talk about, okay, he's hired – Here's what happened. Now, what will be? That's kind of my that big right. thing about my, what true. will be. What's next? Uh, Aaron Rodgers, quarterback of the Packers, had this to say about Mike McCarthy with the Cowboys and his thoughts And when you talked about the whole control question, mm-hmm. Danny. We've had a lot of success down there, and I know that I think that that was probably one of the reasons. You know, we've obviously won the Super Bowl there, but we've won some some big games down there over the years. Um, so I'm not surprised that uh, you know Jerry had infatuation with Mike because you know we've had some really good performances. Um, I don't know. I, I thought maybe he would go somewhere where he had maybe some GM opportunity as well. But I'm happy for him. I sent him a text. He sent me a text back. So. That was the most shady uh, interview. Was. Yeah, we had a lot of success down there. <laughs> yeah, how many slugs did he shoot at the Cowboys for all the whoopings he put on us? Man. He got Wade Phillips fired. He did. <laughs> 45 right, yes, seven. When we came back from that game, Wade got fired. The Dez Collie thing. It, like, it's, it's beating it, us in the playoffs. Yeah, he, was, he was just shooting slugs that whole interview. And then I shot him a text. He responded, yeah, all right, we good. <laughs> yeah, all right, we good. <laughs> You're not going. You're, the, you're not getting no opportunities up there to be a GM, by the way, Mike. <laughs> but the, con- good luck. the control thing is is that so? So when Jerry was talking on his interview, he was saying how you know that's a misconception. How everybody thinks you know I'm this good. Is it? I'm asking you, Louis. I'm look, asking you. Look, okay. Old business partner of mine once said, "Time, time will either expose you or promote you." What have we seen over time? Mm, yeah. Jerry's involved. Jerry came in here in his initial press conference in 1989 and said, I'm going to be in charge of everything from jocks to socks. He is going to be involved. Okay. One time when I was doing a radio show, then I used to do it for, uh, on Fridays, 105.3 The Fan with Jerry, and, and we went into the whole, you know, why don't you hire a GM thing, and Jerry basically said, look, all that person's going to do is going to be in the way because guess what? you got to come through me. 
and you guys go to church, you know the old thing, the, the, the saying <laughs> when Jesus said, "The only way through the Father is through me." So, so you don't think he, you don't think he can change at all? No, I mean, he he's hasn't won a, won a Super bro. Bowl in tw- twenty-seven years. Well, seventy-seven years old. You maybe are. Maybe it's time to change. I'm with you though. Listen, so so look, if Mike McCarthy comes in here, turns the team around. Jerry's a great J, uh, GM, and he should continue doing what he's doing moving forward. Would you say yes? Yes. Now, look, I, I think I think a lot of people believe that Jason never had any say in anything. Yeah, I know that's, that's, that's and that's what, not true. Yeah. That's not yeah. I don't okay, think that's, yeah, no, not, that's not. I always said Jason. Jason would have been a good mob boss because he always made sure he looked clean. The whole Dez thing, come on now. This is true. You knew he wanted Dez. <laughs> he got Jerry, he got Noah. Look clean. <laughs> Terrell Owens gets got. Come on now. Hey, what, as, what, as what much they say as, on the movie, it, it, it is what it is. 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 Right, right. So, so yes, he was, <laughs> as, he was as good as Joe Pesci <laughs> and the Irish. Hey, somebody said, not me. <laughs> not it wasn't me, me that said it. It wasn't me that said it. But, you know, people but are some, saying. People are saying. Jerry, you know Dez is coming. It is what it is. It is what it is. I mean that, that's that's so so. Can Mike McCarthy get in here and tell Jerry and bend his ear on some things? Yes. As much as Jason bent Jerry's ear like Des has to go, he was also the guy that went, "Hey man, we need some help. We gotta go get Amari Cooper." I mean, Jason Garrett did not. He was not just some puppet in the corner that people think. Yeah, this is true. Jerry is going to be willing to listen. I mean, that's something people have always said. He's going to be willing to listen, but. He's going to have it. You're not just going to sit around here and draft a player, have a trade, and Jerry doesn't know. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know. I mean, we've heard about the Johnny Manziel thing, where he wanted to draft Johnny Manziel, and Steven and Will McClay are like, nah, no, no. Zach Martin. And then Jerry, and I always thought it was the craziest thing. So we're at training camp, and Jerry is still opining about the loss of Johnny Manziel. I was like, I bet he's not now. Yeah. I was like, thinking, man, if you're Zach Martin, how would you feel the owner up here still crying about not having Johnny? This is true. And here is Zach Martin having built a Hall of Fame resume. Mm -hmm. Early, already. He said nothing about Johnny Manziel since they caught him in Vegas with a disguise on. (laughs) Jerry was like, yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. So so, there we go. All right. um, Mike. Let's get to later on here in the show. We'll talk about Mike McCarthy's intro. We'll also talk about Jerry in the foxhole. But but I want to get into something that I had written for the Dallas Morning News about retreads mm-hmm. and Mike McCarthy being a retread head coach. Okay. Because there's some Cowboy fans who were all about Lincoln Riley. They were all about Urban Meyer. And they got Mike McCarthy. Let's dive into that next right here on the Players' Lounge. He is Barry Church. He's Danny McRae. I'm Newey Scruggs, and this is DallasCowboys.com Radio. I'm Jay Novacek, former tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Back in the day, I was the guy who always got the tough yards, and that's why I run with John Deere today. In fact, I have a John Deere 3025E tractor that can handle any yard work I need to do, even the tough yards way out back. So if you have one acre or a thousand, John Deere has the equipment that's just right for you. Visit a John Deere dealer today and run with us. We are the official tractor provider of your Dallas Cowboys. Whether you're into being a part of this or more into something like this, SeatGeek has the tickets to the events you love. It's the easiest way to find, buy, and sell tickets. Plus, with their deal score technology, they'll recommend the best seats in the house at the best value. So the next time you're craving this, download the SeatGeek app and let's go. SeatGeek. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. Ready? Okay. Give me an S. S. Give me an O. Cheer. Just okay is not okay. Whether it's cheerleaders or your wireless network, AT&T is America's best wireless network. Best network based on GWS1 score September 2019. <laughs> Back, Back 
to the Players' Lounge. Well, first of all, thank you. Uh, it is great to be here, and um, I'm having a moment here because I don't know where the hell to put my hands. I never sat at a table for a press conference, so <laughs> excuse me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, second thing, I should have brought my type copy of notes like Jerry did. I got my little, I was trying to be slick and slip this in on you. But no, I, I just want to say uh, thank you uh, to so many different people. But I, I will start off with, you know, this past year has been a year of reflection. It, uh, my wife said I won't make it through 10 words. I think I got to about six. But reflection of just what, what a blessed man I am. Great moments that I've been a part of. You know, I'm married to the love of my life. wife. My, my wife is the love of my life. You know, we have beautiful children. Come from a blessed family. You know, and professionally was able to lift the Lombardi Trophy. But I, I do need to tell a story about Saturday night when I was here on the interview. Um, and here I am sitting across the table, Stephen, Jerry Jones, Jerry Jr., you know, Will McClay, Todd Williams. And Jerry's telling a story about um, the purchase of the Dallas Cowboys, and and at the end of the story, he leans over to me and he, he grabs me by the by the forearm and reaches out to shake my hand. He says, "And you need to be the coach of the Dallas Cowboys." So, that's Mike McCarthy's opening press conference on Wednesday, and you are in the players' lounge. Danny McRae, Barry Church, former Cowboy players. I'm Newey Scruggs, longtime media member covering this team. Since Jimmy was here, I covered Jimmy, covered Barry Switzer, Parcells, Campo, Parcells, Old Dave, Old Dave, <laughs> Uncle Wade, and, uh, and Jason Garrett. Your initial thoughts about seeing Mike McCarthy and hearing what he said, Danny Stark. Uh, I liked him, man. You could tell that uh, the, the emotion was genuine. Uh, Jerry and them did everything they possibly could to show him that they really wanted to come, and he and he believed it. He embraced it, and you could see that through his emotion coming out. Barry, I think for sure. I mean, you could tell it was hundred percent genuine. The guy, I mean, he was getting choked up in there. I mean, you could tell he was fighting back the tears. But I think it's a guy that's ready to go back to work. Like you said, he was been off for a year. He like me and Danny were talking about during the break. He basically went home and just studied his craft. He like went back to school, had somebody come in, do the analytics of football, so the game of football doesn't pass him up. And he's ready to go. And I think he's gonna be that kind of that spark plug that this team needs to get over the hump. Hopefully. I loved it. I mean, for a decade, we heard so many robotic press conferences from Jason Garrett, who people will tell you, if you knew Jason, Jason had a really great personality, but he never wanted to give you that. Mm -hmm. And I think that affected him with the fans. Fans started connecting with Mike McCarthy. Hey, here's a guy who's crying because he was so, you know, he wanted the opportunity. Here's a guy that, that just tells you and shows you how much he loves his family. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a guy that, that in my opinion, was letting you sit up here and say, I got something to prove. He didn't like how it ended. And in my opinion, a lot of people talked more about what he didn't do and didn't talk about what he really did do. I mean, was this, a proven guy. I heard, I've heard people say, and you guys saw it written too, he wasted Aaron Rodgers' career or they should have won more. All I know is... If my favorite team uses a first-round pick on a, on, on a quarterback, this guy comes in, develops him, helps make him a starter, wins a Super Bowl, he wins an MVP, and he's going to Canton. Can you sign me up for that? Exactly. And we're sitting there talking about people, like you said, people were sitting there talking about, oh, he wasted this, he wasted, he should have won more. How many people have won a Super Bowl? Uh, listen, the stat of, of, of great quarterbacks and great coaches that have only won one. <laughs> Peyton Breeze. Yes. You know, it, right. It's, it's like, so many. It's like a Pete Carroll Russell. They've won one Super Bowl. The Patriots makes everybody think that the Super Bowl is this easy thing to get. You it's not San, easy you to San get. San Diego would have loved to have at least one on it. Yeah. yeah. This is... yeah. Sean Payton's great. He won one. Won one. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, Pete Carroll's great. He's won one. Mm -hmm. Great payment. They like they won one Super Bowl. The Patriots are that's an anomaly. That, right? Everybody wanna outlier. come here. Yeah, that yes. is an yes. That's something. You won't see it, it again. Oh, like, you, you will not see that again. All right. When I used to host my NBC Sports Radio show, I, I I had a line that I would always use because it worked in so many situations. It's amazing on who we choose to condemn and who we allow forgiveness. 
Oh, yes. You look at Pey- <laughs> what you just talked about. If you look at Mike McCarthy, but by the way, Mike McCarthy and Sean Payton both were up for the Packers job. Mm-hmm. And Payton really wanted the Packers job. And Andrew Brandt ended up saying that what really kind of pushed him over the top is that McCarthy spent one year in Green Bay, so he knew what, 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 you know, what they were all about. So mm-hmm. then Sean takes the Saints job because he didn't want to come back here to, to the Cowboys and be an assistant again. He, he really wanted to be a head coach. But you look at their records, and you just put them side to side, take away the name. Mike's is better than what Sean has done. Mm-hmm. Um, Sean and Drew are basically in that same boat, if you think about it, what what Aaron Rodgers and McCarthy were, where you just say, man, you guys have had a lot of cracks at this thing, but for some reason nobody says he wasted Breeze's career. That you is never true. said right. Drew Breeze is going to the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. I mean, last year they had the NFC Championship game in the Dome. They made a lot of mistakes in that fourth quarter. Yes, yeah, you can't they, just blame it on the PI. They, they got yeah. they got jobbed. That, that was but, huge. But yeah, they, they but, did but make they a lot had, of mistakes. Right, they had opportunities. Even this past last weekend against Minnesota, you saw some things going down there with the Saints. Like, this isn't good. Mm-hmm. This isn't good. But for some reason, and maybe it's because of what the devastation of Hurricane Katrina that the Saints had never won, that Sean gets the halo. Meanwhile, Mike's in Green Bay where they've had other coaches who've won. You know, mm. you really didn't do anything special. It's like, okay, you you the next dude to do it. But I just felt like people are not considering that this man has taken a team to a Super Bowl. He's developed a quarterback. Mm-hmm. They they didn't have up and I made the playoffs this year, didn't make it. I think he only missed the playoffs three times. Do you think the success of the Packers this year is tar- is, is what is getting uh, McCarthy kind of tarnished? But love that. Love that because that's where I talked to my guy in Milwaukee, mm-hmm. Lance Allen. And he said, hey, look, what's one thing Ted Thompson wasn't doing? He wasn't about yeah. bringing in free agents. Bring, you're exactly right. He didn't bring in right. anybody we, we in from Mark McCarthy, especially on the defensive end. side. We right. saw them defensive right. ends that the came Smith up here brothers. to Jerry World. I'm like, goodness gracious. <laughs> and, I'm sure, I'm, and, and I'm sure he's probably thinking, I could have used that. I mean, you got the Smith brothers. They brought in Amos. I mean, they brought in all this defensive talent that they weren't willing to do that in McCarthy's tenure there. That's how, what happened when you just want to coach. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about this? When they Y'all got hands to that. Well, hands well, that. Well, when he, when he was hired by them, they told him, this is what you're going to do. Yeah, no, I'm, this, I'm running it. This is what you're going to do. And you had no choice. So here's a story that, that – um, I think Mike Silver had told – because, you know, Mike Silver of NFL uh, Network is tight, tight with Aaron Rodgers because mm-hmm. they're both Cal guys. But – when Marshawn Lynch was in Buffalo and they were basically done with Lynch, Rodgers had went to the Packers and said, go get him. Go get him. Ted Thompson, nah, nah, not going to do it. So Marshawn ends up in Seattle. So mm. when you've got a general manager who stuck to his ways and didn't evolve, you cannot in the NFL just say, we're just going to draft only. We're going we're gonna to build. You have to go you out and plug, pe- plug in Especially people. Especially nowadays. They, they had a shot, man. But it just ate itself out of the, uh, out of the uniform. Was it? Yeah, 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 yeah. They were trying for, to get for, my for, man money. Yeah, for a little bit, he was he was all right. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, 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 my, man, my man just started eating itself out. I've never seen anything like that, man. Yeah, he was goodness. They're like, we'll give you a meal to lose weight. Let me add 10. I ain't never seen that. I'm going to lose 15, but I'm going to get back 10. Yeah. So I wrote a piece in the Dallas Morning News, and I said, you know, Mike McCarthy, hiring Mike McCarthy as a retread is a good thing. So certain people saw the headline, they went crazy. Oh, this is garbage. You're calling him a retread. Um, well, when you, this is what people call coaches who get jobs again. They call them retreads. But how about this? 15 of the last 23 Super Bowls have been won by retread coaches. Coaches that are on their second jobs. The only one who wasn't on a second job was on his third NFL job was Pete Carroll. But we're talking about Bill Belichick, mm-hmm. Pete Carroll. Tony Dungy, uh, Mike Shanahan, John Gruden, these guys in their second opportunities had learned. There was a book that um, Harvey McKay, uh, a business, business writer, uh, and it's a business book called We Got Fired. It's the best thing that ever happened to us. Talks about Joe Torre, Lou Holtz, uh, Bill Belichick, people who had, and other executives, but people, uh, Lee Iacocca, people who were, hey, they were good at a profession, but for some reason it didn't work out. They got fired, and the next time around, You know, they were ready to go. And I still contend that Mike McCarthy spending a mastermind one year trying to, what did I do well? Let me do a deep dive Mm -hmm. into myself. I just believe that'll work because Pete Carroll did the same thing. Look at the success he's had. If you look at his book, read his book, Win Forever, he talked about the deep dive he did into himself and what type of program he would have the next time he got another opportunity. That's what he took to USC. Okay, that was the Pete. That was he the Pete Carroll. That that, right. That was hey, boom. I know who I am, what I am, and what I want to be. Next time I get my shot, I'm ready to go. Well, I believe in that uh, about seventy percent. I think I, I'm a firm believer in timing is 
everything. Like uh, most of those guys, like Pete Carroll gets there and Russell Wilson turns out to be the, the guy. That guy? Right? Yeah. Okay. So the, the, pro, the, the program's great, but he also he, he had a guy. Yes. McCarthy, you know, he did shape Aaron Rodgers, but he's Aaron Rodgers. You know, it's, so not, not taking anything away from him. I'm just saying timing – is huge. Now, you know, Pete won the division. I think it was a 7 9 and 1. They beat the was, Saints. But that was without Russell. That was with, yeah. it was to, to, it was to the Hustle Jackson. Jackson? They, no, were, like Tavarius, was, they were still 7 and 9. Yeah, but but still. And they won, they won a division and, at 7 and, and, and 9. Then you the beat, sa- and then they beat it. They, 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 they won a playoff game. Yeah. You talking about New Orleans away from home? I mean, we just go on his story. So he does that. Then he ends up signing Matt Flynn. They give Matt Flynn all that money, and, then they, and they drafted uh, Russell Wilson. And he ended up beating him out, yeah. And remember, Matt Flynn got that big contract because he came here and beat us. He did. <laughs> he yeah. ended up coming yeah. off the bench for Mike McCarthy's Packers, and had a nice well. little run, and, and playing then they, well. You know, so McCarthy developed him. He also had developed Aaron Brooks, who won the Saints' ever first uh, first ever playoff game. This is true. So w- when I hear retread, I think that. That can be a really good thing. Rick Carlisle took over for Avery Johnson, and I was there for, for that for that run, Avery's run, and when they brought in Rick, and people were not – they weren't excited. They were like, okay, here's this guy. You know, He was with the Pistons. Pistons fired him, and mm-hmm. the next year Larry Brown takes the Pistons and they go beat the Lakers and win the championship. So how good is the guy? And then, oh, yeah, he's the Pacers. He was a Pacers head coach. Mm-hmm. That was the malice in the palace, dude. Nah. <laughs> you know, that was, that was kind of the, the thing on Rick. And look at what he's done here. Won the first ever championship for the Mavericks. He brought in a good staff of people. And, and, and you know, Terry Stotts was on that staff. We see what Terry's done in Portland. He's been outstanding. Dwayne Casey. Dwayne Casey ended up leaving the Mavericks and going to Toronto, becoming mm-hmm. coach of the year. So he had a plan and he knew what he wanted to do. And that third time around, bam, it, it clicked. And then he got with an owner who people said meddled, who people <laughs> said talked too much, and they ended up get, getting it done. So in basketball terms, so you do you guys think that McCarthy has the opportunity? I'm not, I'm just, will he have? The, will he do this? Um, you know how Kerr kind of took over. Was that Mark <laughs> Man, Jack- you, I saw I was going right there. Right? <laughs> Kerr took over Mark Jackson. You know, they, Mark Jackson couldn't get those guys over the hump. Everybody says you know Kerr, you know, got him over the hump, but it was with Mark Jackson's players and all that. Do you think McCarthy has an opportunity to do that? Him over the hump, I, he better. <laughs> Man, do you think? I, do you, yeah, I think I think he'll turn it. I think he'll turn it around. The opportunity is there. Yes, that's I all think you can ask. That's it. That's all. That's well, all you can ask. For I think the way he's shaping up his coaching staff, I think it's totally different than what Jason has. So I think, I think let's I go, think he has. Go. You know what? That's the next thing I want to go right there. Let's dive into that. Uh, Mike Nolan. It's been reported going to be the defensive coordinator, so Mike Nolan's going to be the defensive coordinator. He's the linebackers coach, right, for uh, the Saints? The Saints, I got you. Okay. Uh, Mike Nolan, when he was the head coach of the 49ers, had made McCarthy his offensive coordinator, so they know each other. Okay. John Fossil will be the uh, special teams coach. Joe Philbin is going to replace Mark Colombo as the offensive line coach. Uh, Philbin was in Green Bay with McCarthy. When McCarthy ended up getting uh, let go, Philbin had taken over as the interim head coach. He used to be the head coach with, with the, the Dolphins, Dolphins as well, yeah. so, so they have a working relationship. So just what – you know so far about the staff your thoughts uh i like it uh i like the fact <laughs> that we did not keep everybody that was with jason right you mm-hmm. want to you had these relationships nothing against those guys but let this guy come in and run this how he wants to run it because that's some of the stuff that got us in trouble in the past i think just the, all the internal guys that continued to stay here for 10 10 to 12 years however long they were here we just started seeing the same thing mm-hmm. right let these guys bring in their fresh ideas everybody if mccarthy's gonna run the offense he got a guy that he trusts on defense so that guy will be able to handle defense same with special teams all these guys will come together of course be one team but all these guys have success uh, in the past, and they're mm-hmm. able to bring in their own plans and own schemes. And like I said, special teams, I think they hurt us last year because we tried to run Rich Basaccia's scheme, yeah, but he's not here. And we saw the effects of that. So yeah. I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, you're 100% right. I mean, I think when you're starting fresh, you got to have a new slate. I mean, and that includes your coaching staff as well. Uh, if there's one person that I would like to see him keep, uh, other than Kellen Moore would be Big Cat, just so, for the simple fact that I think he's gotten the most out of this D-line. I mean, yeah, they had a drop in production this year, but the two years before that, I mean, you had Demarcus Lawrence doing double-digit sacks. You had Quinn coming in here this year doing work. And so I just feel like there's one coach that they would keep. It would be Leon Litt. So hopefully that happens, but I am agree with you 100%. You got to have a I like GB, too, staff. though. I like GB at running back. I know they, they probably won't keep him, but 
He mean, did. He did Zeke, the best Tony out of Pollard Zeke. Yeah. Come, Tony Pollard got in and showed out. Uh, he got a fullback in there that's doing doing a little something. Yeah. He playing, you know, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I, I, I mean, I like him. I like GB, and I might be biased because I like him as a person. That's true. On the GB, we all like. If you if you don't like Gary yeah. Brown, you just don't like people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Stan Drayton, who is the associate head coach and run game coordinator at the University of Texas, that has been reported by Todd Archer and a few others that, that they are talking to him right now. Okay. And his connection is he coached Ezekiel Elliott at Ohio State. So that could be – I do think if you just spent – Fifteen million dollars a year on this dude. You wanna you wanna make sure that there's a a connection. I believe. So if it's not Gary Brown and it's Stan Drayton, I think that they can feel good in terms of hey, look, here's a guy that worked with him, helped develop him. Mm-hmm. He has a relationship there. But I'm with you. You need to bring in people who you trust and also people who understand what it is you want. So your Parcells talked about when he first got here. You know, some of the guys he he didn't know. But he, you know, he, they, you know, he, they, he knew them, but they mm-hmm. didn't work together. He said, "I had to coach the coaches." So, in some cases, with a Mike Lowell and, and and Joe Phil, you don't have to coach them. They know what you want, and you don't have to worry about what's being said in the meeting rooms. And I would take it right there. You guys have been in the meetings rooms with your position coaches. How do you go and how do you deal with a new guy and what it is they want? I want you to think about that. We'll take a break, but when you come back. As players, how do you now deal with new coaches, new especially because posi- position coaches are where you spend most of your time. No People just don't understand that enough. It's about you and the position coach. We'll do that next right here on the Players Lounge on DallasCowboys.com radio. Ready? Okay. Give, Give me an S. 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 Give me an O. O. Give me an S. 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 Give me an O. O. What's that spell? So, so. Cheer. Just okay is not okay. Whether it's cheerleaders or your wireless network, AT&T is America's best wireless network. Best network based on GWS1 score September 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again for tailgating with the Otterbox boys. Otterbox, the company that builds wildly overproductive phone cases? The one and only. But cases are just the start. Otterbox is the official outfitter of tailgating. If they can keep my phone safe, what can they do for my parking lot party? How about protecting your beverages from suboptimal drinking temperatures with their elevation tumblers? And Otterbox elevation tumblers come in three sizes. A 10-ouncer, a 20-ouncer, and even a 64-ounce Growler. Check out all the colors and sizes of their elevation tumblers at otterbox.com. Whether you're into being a part of this <laughs> or more into something like this, SeatGeek has the tickets to the events you love. It's the easiest way to find, buy, and sell tickets. Plus, with their deal score technology, they'll recommend the best seats in the house at the best value. So the next time you're craving this, the Seat Geek app and let's go. Seat Geek. Hey Cowboys Nation, this season when the Cowboys win, you get to experience the sweet taste of victory because if the Cowboys win, the next day Duncan is offering a free medium hot or iced coffee. So don't just celebrate the Cowboys success from the sidelines, head to Duncan and treat yourself to real victory because this season Cowboys fans aren't only winning on game day, they're winning the next day too with a free medium coffee. Cowboys Nation runs on Duncan. Excludes cold brew. Limit one per guest. Participation may vary. Limited time offer. Back to the Players' Lounge. I'm Newey Scruggs. It's Barry Church, Danny McCray, two former Dallas Cowboy players. Just a media guy. Uh, <laughs> Emmy Award winning. Tell everybody where they can find you on Twitter. Uh, at Barry Church 42 on both Twitter and Instagram. Uh, at Danny DMac 44 on Twitter. At Danny underscore McCray 40 on Instagram. And you can also find me at the Dallas Cowboys Youth Camps. There we go. All right. Best coach in the biz. <laughs> I am Mike, on, Mike, I'm here, baby. <laughs> I'm on Twitter at Newey Scruggs. That's N-E-W-Y-S-C-R-U-G-G-S. That's N-E-W-Y-S-C-R-U-G-G-S. So, for the players who are going to be coming back, kind of a lot of new coaches. As former players, you guys have been through it, and mm-hmm. it's different assistant coaches come in. Yes, the head coach is the guy who's in charge, but you spend the majority of your time with your position coach and your group in meetings. So 
How does it go in terms of dealing with a new position coach? What do you as a player need to tell your your new position coach that maybe they do or do not know about what it is you do well or or you know just just that whole experience? Uh, well, I did, I did go through it twice. Um, when I was a younger player, uh, we had you know Campo and Maxi and all those guys when they came in there. And as a young dude, I'm just like I don't know what's going on. So once they got once that whole coaching staff was fired, I think that's when Henderson and Baker and all them mm-hmm. boys came in. So at that time, I'm I'm not you know the leader. I'm not a captain or anything like that. I'm still a young guy trying to figure things out trying to get into my starting realm so I kind of kept quiet around I let the older guys I let Sensen Ball and those guys kind of get that connection with those coaches and everything like that and I kind of you know faded to the back because I didn't know what was going to happen when my next you know if I was going to be here or not Um, but later on when we got another coach staff had come in, I think it was Baker and uh, not Baker, but um, I wasn't here when y'all had. The, yeah, we uh, had them come in, and I was a captain at that time. So I had to get, I had to get in the off season. I had to go talk to them just to break bread with them, just kind of you know get to feel how how they want us to play and what type of defenses they're going to bring in. And so once you get that early feel for them, and you get that into the OTAs, you get that into the season, it just becomes that camaraderie part. And, the rest is history after that. Were you speaking to the difference of when you were younger and not really sure? And not really sure, yeah, I'm undrafted, yeah. I'm not sure. And then so, when you got the captain status. So, like, some of I, – I would assume a lot of the guys who may be on smaller contracts, at the end of the contracts, what the mindset that they have is, really, honestly, does this guy like me? Do I fit into what he wants to do? Will I still be here? I need to go figure out what it is that he actually thinks about me as a player. I think I remember one time we had it, and each player had to go speak to the coach um, after they had watched some film on him. So you could tell them, hey, I'm here now. This is what I think you do well. This is what I don't think you do well. And you can help yourself by doing X, Y, and Z throughout the offseason and help you in training camp when we're doing our evaluations. So those guys in that position should go talk to the coach as soon as they get a chance or whenever he gets settled to figure out where they stand. The captains, mm-hmm. on the other hand, need to be the guys to go figure out how they want to run the room. Like a guy like Demarcus Lawrence who's going to be here, when you having that conversation with the new coach, your conversation is, how do you want the room ran? What what type of leader do do you are you used to and do you want me to be and how can I help? And the other guys are, what can I do to stay here? All right, let's talk about uh, just some potential free agents here. And, and to me, obviously, the, you have three big ones. Dak Prescott, Amari Cooper, Byron Jones. Gentlemen, thoughts? Uh, well, Dak ain't going nowhere. I mean, <laughs> I mean he, he's at the worst, he'll get franchise tagged or he'll get a, a long-term deal. I don't think he's going anywhere. You can't let that go. Um, but on the defensive side of the ball, I think it's, I think it's going to be tough. I think you got you know Quinn or, or B. Jones. And in my opinion – I think you got to go with B. Jones on this yes. one. Yes, not, not <laughs> saying, so I'm not so saying glad. he, not what? saying he doesn't yeah. get you all what? these interse- He doesn't get you yes. all these interceptions that that people want. He's not a ball hawker, but this guy locks down receivers. When have you ever seen a receiver just kind of go off on Byron Jones? N- never. Well, think, mean, well, think about your defensive scheme, right? The great defensive schemes allow you to cut off one side of the field by putting a player on. Like if I say, "Hey, Byron, you on the right side. You take care of the right side." Mm-hmm. I can focus my whole defense on everyone you else. You all are so deep. You, you got like you got to. You, you got like to keep this dude. Listen, you can. You just pay the pass rusher hundred million. All right, and what that get? Yeah, <laughs> you can. <could>, nah. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. being real. You, Five you know, sacks. Get you. Get you a defensive tackle. You know, get you. Get you another uh, defensive end in the draft. Sure up coverage. This is a passing league. And it's the dude, teams with great cornerbacks. You see what Peters did when he got uh, traded. He took him. You to see the next what round. happened with Ramsey when when he uh, got traded bro- to, to L. A. Brother, bro. Uh, no, bro no, 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 no. I'm will, just telling you. I saw the am, effect on the defense. I will quote you what Hall of Fame Warren Sapp has said for years: Back don't work without the front. If I'm putting pressure on the quarterback, he's not gonna have all day long. Now here's my other thing with Byron who is a tremendous character guy, mm-hmm. okay? I'm not paying a corner who doesn't get picks. If you can't get the football, why am I paying you? What's one of the biggest issues and problems they have on this team? They don't pick anything off back there. Everything hey, is new. This is, <laughs> look, don't you got a new defensive coordinator who's going to run a new scheme? Got to work up front, like, maybe start up front. Yeah, he can play more than just start up front. You got $100 million up front already. And what happened? <laughs> you assume you're going to get a defensive who, tackle who, next. Who I'm, had the team in sacks? <laughs> I keep that guy. You keep, you you keep him because he led the team in sacks? How old is Quinn now? He's he getting up there, too. <laughs> he, you could probably get him on a cheaper deal than he can on, on, on Jones. Oh, yeah, you could definitely get him cheaper. I think you would have to uh, pay Jones. I, I really don't think you would have to break the bank 
you got to give him 16. You got, you got to pay him. He's, he's a quarterback. He's a lockdown yeah. corner. And we talk about picks. Listen, I'd rather do not catch the ball on me than catch it. A pick is, is a plus. This is true. Okay. And you got to do getting yarded every game. That's why Peters got traded. Oh, he was, now he getting picks. But for one team. He was definitely getting bombed on. He, he was, was definitely getting, getting bombed two on. Two years in a row. I, I remember Mike Thomas, King Guard Mike, who they say does not have long speed, dusted Marcus <laughs> Peters. He gambling. But he got picks now, and that's the corner that you want. But, okay, L, but so, LA, he wasn't the same guy. So you you guys are taking Byron Jones, letting Quinn go, Amari Cooper. No, I didn't, we didn't say let Quinn go. But and you can get it. You can get it. Yeah, okay, everybody's not going We got like $80 million in uh, everybody, cash Everybody at the state, you know that. You know that. Everybody at the state. No, so does you gonna go with the DB over the over the uh, over the defensive? Yeah, because we already got one. So, we have no DB. So where do we uh, where do we stand with Amari Cooper here? Uh, if you can get him for about fifteen, yeah. But anything over that, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, he's a good. I'm not sold. Man, I saw the last Just month and a half. I'm not. So, I'm not. Man, come man. on, Newy. I saw Jalen <laughs> Smith and uh, and who got added him and uh, Jalen Smith and Marcus Adams. We swiped it to the Pro Bowl. Let me tell you, come on. Yeah, we know about the Pro Bowl. Yeah, right? yeah. we know about the Pro Bowl. Yeah, yeah. It's all about the play social media. Post. Is, is oh. JJ Watt in the Pro Bowl? <laughs> they got hold on. What? No, the Pro Bowl. Some. A lot of times is a name thing. I remember how, this a is, lot. It is. I, it's all it not, is now. Not, not to not to, to trash on how welcome we do to the, voting. Welcome to the haters. Man, <laughs> no, no, no. Church. Listen, listen, hey, hey, listen hey, let hey. me tell you something. <laughs> so we will walk in. <laughs> we will walk in there to do voting for the uh, for the Pro Bowl, right? Yeah. And we walk in there as, as young guys, so we didn't really know the play. The coach would have six guys on the board, and they said, "Hey, check the box right here." One of these guys got to be the option. One of these guys got to be the it guy. Ain't no <laughs> you don't even have your own opinion on who this person is doing to be. It's on the board. Uh, yeah. So and everybody be like, hey, so who we picking for? Uh, <laughs> yeah, ain't, I, I, I ain't really see him play, so who we picking? It's, it's who you see on, on ESPN man. the most yeah. of the time. That's all. Yeah, they you know, even... hey, we've been inside the voting. Okay. So, and I'm just going to simply say this. When this team was three and five, and they, they had the receiver by committee – Things was, wasn't working. Mm-hmm. Mari Cooper came here, turned things around. Dak Prescott has a guy that he can trust. I look at Amari Cooper and I think about how the receivers act mm-hmm. and the way the room is versus when they didn't have him and they had other people in the receivers room. You talking about the last half oh, of the month, no. the last half of the, se- of, of the season? You talking about when they didn't have him? Come on, man. I'm, I'm just, I'm just gonna say, I, I, I would, I would want to make sure before, if I'm going to give. 35 40 million dollars to the quarterback that he's got it. his top weapon. But that but we also know that guy after every every play he makes he walks off the field. He's been hurt. He was hurt in training camp. He was hurt all year long. Got he said hurt. he wasn't hurt. Come on, man. He said he wasn't hurt. Come I'm on, man. I'm about what the man said. So, not, so not you in this year, right? <laughs> you won't get a man 20 million. I'm he, waving a flag. Roll Tide. I'm waving a flag. One I'm waving a flag. All right. All right. Check out. Should, so how much you said you're going to pay him? Then you got a minus of me if each time he got locked down this year. All right. So let go Stephon Gilmore. He didn't show Marshawn Lattimore. Marshawn Lattimore. Listen, the dude for the last six weeks of the season, disip- fourth and what? The man not, not even on the field. The, the coaches don't even pay trust you game. playing so bad. Don't, over, don't overlook this, right? As a coach, right? That's the reason why Sanjay not Yeah, yo. <laughs> Yo, best, them bricks. yo, best player, the coach does not have confidence in him to put him on the field on the biggest play of the season. Why do we have new coaches? No. Why do we have new coaches? No. That is speaking to the player and how bad of a game you have. I had a coach that said, hey, man, you can have a bad play. Do not have a bad game. This dude plays so bad <laughs> that they was like, nah, bro, you. <laughs> we got this one. We got this one. That's that is bad. That's bad play. Let me write this down at eleven forty-eight thirty-six. The show became the haters. <laughs> Hater <laughs> club. Hater. Come on, man. Hey, so, I'm so, telling you, I'll be Silky Johnson up here, <laughs> and I'll be the hater of all of it. If you go pay that man twenty mil, ultra pro brothers. I'm saying this, man. It's a, it's a lot of people. Club. It's a lot of people who put input in. Would you play it on do- the field? Dollar bill. Would you make him? A, is he a top five wide receiver? In the NFL right now, because it would depend. Be careful what you say. You might be well, 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 I, I do because I got to think about it. Because I put Michael Thomas there, Evans, Godwin, yes, Mike Evans. If he don't tear his hamstring, he's finishing the season crazy. Godwin, Keenan Allen. Don't come on, man. <laughs> Keenan Allen, uh, Devontae Adams. 
DeAndre Hopkins. <laughs> I mean, we can go. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we can, we, we can go, go all the way. Okay. What, what, what number we at now? Hopkins. We got Julio. Got Julio's Julio. on it. Okay. Yeah, because they all um, they all played uh, the last half now, of the now, season. Now, right? he, he, here's what here's what I would also tell you. I love because in my opinion, I don't think that there's been elite coaching this past decade here with the Cowboys. You give Mike McCarthy and Amari Cooper, can he make another Devontae Adams? Um, look at what he did with Cobb and Donald Driver. I mean, they had to, he knows how to get some of these receivers. Give me an elite head coach like Mike McCarthy, who has won a Super Bowl and they and they spent 60, 40 percent throwing the ball. The same head coach that, we'll had, that, that had Amari Cooper last year when they were three and five is the same head coach that had this guy at the end of the season when he disappeared. All right? <laughs> elite coaching or not. He was the same, he was around the same people. What and that? the result was total. Opposite. What I that? will say this though. I don't. You, I don't I'm think Gallup can do it by itself though. No, no. no, no, no. I will say I'm not that. saying get rid of Amari. Okay. We okay. talking about paying him. As like a, I said, 15, as give him 15. A best good. receiver in the league. I said no. I, I, I'm All right, let pay him, him. Just let him go to Philadelphia. No, no, He'll be in <laughs> Philadelphia out there tagging you. What? <laughs> how, how good the Raiders been since he left here? I'm just, just okay, okay. Okay. Oh, man, look, yeah, they, they, they also they also lost Antonio Brown as well. They I'll they be, had a good mm, replacement for uh, I'll be watching I'll, for be, Amari. I'll be watching the Pro Bowl with uh my man. He, Mark Cooper. Make sure you got them clear eye views on this. Yeah, like, you right? swipe it. You swipe it. You swipe it on. That's so. how you know he wasn't hurt. You talking about he hurt. He going to go play in the Pro Bowl or hurt. That is true. Let us in our our remaining time here. We got about uh, 9 minutes here on the players lounge slash haters club. Uh, <laughs> Boys, we just the, can't, can't hate, give it a pee. Now we hate. Now. Man, as long as you have my papa though, I'm all right. Head coaching, <laughs> you'll get your papa though. <laughs> Wait, you still ain't got that papa though? I ain't got oh, my papa though, man. Yeah, crazy. he trying to talk all the way through. It's that's okay. Crazy. You know, yeah, that's though. crazy, dude. He tell you, he tried to call me too. Yeah, he don't mention nothing about Papa. Though. Every time he every time he call me, I be thinking he gonna say, "Man, hey, meet me." Uh. It ain't no we gonna get the, we ain't, we ain't yeah, getting nah. together. Nah, nah. I'm waiting. Can I wear my my Clemson Tigers? Uh, mm. wear, I'm gonna get a Clemson Tiger national championship shirt and bring it on in there. Talk so, about ooh. the haters club. So. This is yeah, you are right. The haters club. You headed down there, right? <laughs> oh, okay. I'll be there later All right. today. All right, we gonna okay. see. All right, All right go ahead. What, what, what we gonna talk about? Because Rooney Rule. Mm, okay. Uh, it produced one head coach. One head coaching hire. There's still one left, Cleveland Browns. Mm -hmm. But uh, Ron Rivera ends up getting the job in Washington. Uh, there were no black head coaches who got jobs. Eric Bieniemy, who was highly recommended um, by Andy Reid, who's the offensive coordinator for the Chiefs. The same job where Matt Nagy went from being the offensive coordinator of the head coach of Chicago Bears. Doug Peterson went from being Andy Reid's offensive coordinator to Philadelphia Eagles. There have been some people that think that the Rooney Rule is broken. Some people think that the Rooney Rule is just not not even worth it. Some say it's just a sham. What's your opinion, gentlemen? Uh, I would say it's worth it. I mean, because at the end of the day, these um, these gentlemen are they're getting they're getting interviews and they're getting their name out there. So I was I mean, it's you rather have an interview interview than nothing at all. Now, um, would we like to see more? Um, black men in the head coaching positions. Yeah, we would love to do that. But um, right now, I'm thinking the interviews. I mean, the interview process is good and everything like that. And you would rather have interviews than nothing at all. Yeah. First of all, you cannot make these dudes hire a black guy. I mean, it, it, yeah. And at the end of the day, it's you can't, their you can't make them do it. The rule is the rule. I'm glad that they get interviews. But at the end of the day, you not you cannot sit up here and try to mandate how many minority coaches that the league has to hire, hire as a whole. All these guys, these are individual guys. These are individual owners of, of of these teams, and they have preferences, and the preference is obvious. So keep the rule, because I mean, every once in a while, you will get a guy who goes in there and and he awes the uh, the GM, and, and he gets hired. So mm -hmm. keep it. Without that, then they might not even get the interview. The job you do not in interview for, you cannot get. Exactly. I, I've gone through this in my profession, television. Okay, where they, because of, of the way the these TV uh, stations work and, and, and the EEOC, all that kind of stuff, the, the laws, you have to interview minority candidates. So I've been on those interviews before where, hey, look, they weren't going to get the job. But I remember one job that I really wanted to get in Tucson, Arizona, young in my career. I didn't get it. But the news director in Arizona ended up calling a guy in Savannah, Georgia, and said, look, he, he, he didn't get the job here, but you should look at it. That's a job I could have had. I didn't take it. I ended up going to Austin, Texas. But that was one of those six degrees of separation. You don't know who's going to be in the room and who can say, you know what, boy, Danny McCray, we almost hired him, but down there, somebody else, he can help some. So I just believe in that. Now, when you people are, are on the owners, and, and yes, you can be on the owners, but let me also say this. I don't think people are also talking about some of the head coaches enough. Ron Rivera gets the Washington job. 
He brings in Jack Del Rio, Mm -hmm. who's white. He brings in uh, North Turner's kid to be his offensive coordinator, who's white. Mm -hmm. Um, So when you talk about getting a pipeline, you know, if you're not allowed as a minority coach to actually become a coordinator, put yourself in the positions to be the next guy up, it's tough. Mike McCarthy's coming here. He's brought in Mike Nolan to be his defensive coordinator. I mean, so a part of these things where people are banging on the owners – you got to get guys got to get in positions as coaches. So when you start to look at how you start shaping these staffs, mm-hmm. how many of these guys are actually putting in minorities where they can become a head coach? Follow with these Bruce Arians. Follow him. Just go follow him, man. Go see what they got one, going one on guy. down there. He's and, and he's right. going. He's going to continue. Yeah, he is, he, but he's going. Hopefully, somebody follows the trend. Right. Yeah. He is making. He's intentionally making an effort to surround himself with. Coaches that he really well, wants, and yeah, a lot Byron of those guys. down there, right? That's his OC, right? Yeah, uh, uh-huh. Goodwin. Goodwin's the OC. So oh, he's got basically he, yeah, all, all of his coordinators are black. Are black. Okay, all uh-huh. of his coordinators in Tampa Bay are black. He's continued that, like he from Arizona all the way to um, to Tampa. Like he's going to continue doing that, and he's he he makes it a purpose. His purpose yeah, to get that true. done. Like I said, it only takes one. Yeah, but that's that's another thing. There, it's just you know, for, for as a coach, you got to get yourself in a position where can you become a coordinator? Can, and that's something I think. Jerry's been here. I think he's only had one minority coordinator. It was Brian Stewart, who was here under under Wade Phillips, and mm. then he wasn't here very long. But that's just so. So I just go into that as as a owner. You know, you're looking at your staff and looking at your key people. So so we can look at the owners, but. Do not forget to look at the head coaches because these head coaches are the guys that are bringing in the people that people say, who's the next guy? I mean, how does Brian Flores get his opportunity? It's because he was elevated within Bill Belichick's mm-hmm. system. Does Christian Shaw count? No, no, because Rod Marinelli was a defensive player. Yeah, yeah, you know, That's true. You know, once you start speaking and then, you know, and, and how the defense plan, the but, people start saying he's the coordinator. And, but, that and that was so Rod, was but remember, Rod was trying to say, hey, I'm trying to get this guy. Rod was actually trying to help him. Right. Yeah, you know, down the road there. to become a head coach. Yeah. So Rob was actually trying to do yeah, a good so, thing. So, so, so he, he counts as one of those guys, like the Brian, uh, Brian Flores. 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 Okay. But Flores, I mean, the thing he I had, mean, somebody you know, tried to elevate him. Right, right. Into, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. You had someone who was trying to help him. So yeah. that's mm-hmm. the pipeline. That's the whole thing. When people are hey, well, who's in the pipeline? Who's the, well, you got to have head coaches who get you in the pipeline. But if coaches are just going to hire their friends and all their friends are, are basically white guys and they just simply say, hey, look, you can be a DB coach, black guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. You can be a, a running back coach. If you get pigeonholed, then it's hard. I mean, Eric Bieniemy's done everything that you need to do to become a head coach, except for the goalposts keep moving for the guy. Yeah, that's true. So the Rooney rule is not the problem. The problem is how you get opportunities to show people what it is you can do. That's true. I never looked at it by that point. I mean, I always kind of sat at it to the owners, like, man, they got to get these guys. But you're all right, man. Yeah, it, it, it's man. both. Yeah. It's, it, I think it's both. Oh, oh, it's no, both. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely, bad. Yeah, it's it's both. definitely your, but, yeah. but that's, to me, when I think about what's, when you say what needs to change, what can change and, and be most effective is getting guys opportunities as coordinators. Because basically who you're hiring, except for what the Giants did, what, what they're doing, Joe Judge, they're, be, they're guys who are coordinators. The problem I have with the enemy thing is people, well, he didn't call plays. Well, other dudes weren't calling plays. Yeah. Andy Reid got a job in Philadelphia and didn't call one play, was never even a coordinator. So it's like, okay, so why do the rules keep changing here? Right. Mm-hmm. So, but but there are, I mean, you can't have a league of 80%, you know, players that are, that are, that are minorities <laughs> and tell me that can't, <laughs> nothing, ain't nobody worth anything to be ever become a coach. Um, you are correct. Man. You know, that's, that's, that's just, it's impossible. But I just truly believe you got to have some opportunities to be able to show folks what it is you can do. Yeah. And and even when you do, you know, like Tony Dungy for years, you know, Tony, oh, he didn't interview well. Well, he's too soft spoken. I mean, it was all these excuses that were used against him. And then what happened when Tony had a job? He got a shot. He took off. He took <laughs> off. He, he took off. And, you know, so that's 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 been my 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 kind of uh, frustration is just, hey, look, it's hard to ever advance if all coaches do is hire their homies and buddies and friends. That's true. And it's not just here. Look at the collegiate level. Look at the collegiate. I, I told one of my buddies, I said, man, I said, I don't know. I said, as a black guy, I don't know how you do that business. Because either you're a DB coach, running back coach, you don't get to call plays. Rarely you do. And it's hard to get a job. I said, it's, it's, I, said I don't see a whole lot of advancement in it is what you do. Yeah. And people can talk about merits all day long. But if I keep changing, if I keep changing the narrative and keep moving the goalposts so you can't get a job. I mean, I heard somebody say, well, Eric B. Enemy's offense in Colorado wasn't good. How many years ago was that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, is his offense good now? 
<laughs> did, did, did he help coach the MVP? Well, it was all Andy. But you didn't say that when Doug Peterson got a job. That's true. You know, or so, Matt Nagy. Right. So that, that's that thing of just uh, how, do you, how do you win if people want to go into that? There's a lot of – can he not grow? Mm-hmm. Guys, can, I mean, Andy Reid left Philadelphia. People were just tired of Andy Reid, almost in the same way of Mike McCarthy. But what did Andy Reid do? Andy Reid, different guy. He learned, nobody wanted to give him any credit that you know what maybe after ten plus years in Philly, a di- I, my message was was just needed to change, and I needed to get some new thing in my blood. Mm-hmm. Like go a place. Where, I think after seven years as a coach, you making more enemies than you making friends. Is this true? It, it's, this just, true? it's just the nature of the business. Unless you're winning championships, like like. Like Belichick. Belichick, yeah. after about seven, eight years, they're starting to nitpick at why didn't this happen? Da, 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 you had these chances. It gets tough. It gets tough. So this was fun. Uh, good luck to your Tigers. Can the Tigers a... are going to win the national championship. Okay, there we go. That's, yeah. that's all I want to hear. That's the all I want to hear. No, no, no. no. Clemson, the the LSU, LSU, Bayou, Bengals are getting the dub, <laughs> and we're going to win by plus 14. It is. Remember this, Barry. I'm, I'm listening. Heisman Trophy winners have had a hard time winning national championships. This is true. This dude been this hating on Joe Burrow since the beginning of the season. He it's, always finds some type of stat. That a, no, 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 no. The man is winning everything. This is what he's going to do. He's going to win the Heisman, win the Natty, first pick in the draft. That's it. These are the three things that's going to happen. And you, nothing you say can change that. Is little 22 playing? That's yes, everybody's playing. So when I see you on Friday at 11 o'clock, Ooh. I just – as a matter of fact – yeah, like you said, we're going to turn it into a national championship celebration okay. dinner. Twice mm. twice we have doubted Dabo Swinney against go. Nick Saban. Y'all done put and, on the music you know for this guy. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying. Tiger's going to win one of them. Tiger's winning. I-G-E-R-S. Tigers. I see y'all out there, man. Don't you worry. Okay. I just want you to bring that same enthusiasm that Clemson Ooh, win. Uh, yeah. We might not hear if Clemson win. <laughs> I'm just saying, we might not hear from you if Clemson wins. This guy. I'm just saying. Is that a lot? Is that a lot? If they they win. Whatever. I got to hit the road. Everyone, thank you. (laughs) Safe travels. (laughs) For being a part of the Players Lounge slash Haters Club. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Hey, 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 hey. (laughs) This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?